you know I love my budget perfumes. I love every perfume that just sparks joy in me or fits the occasion, doesn't matter which price point. But I felt like at the moment I had so many budget perfumes on my trays, like regularly continuing to be on the tray and me gravitating towards them. So I thought today I would sum up all of the budget perfumes that I love to wear at the moment. We have to try with this one because it's just one I crave so so much and it has been a while now. So this is Avenue by Grandeur I think and this smells like a niche perfume and it even looks like a niche perfume. This is a Middle Eastern house made in uh, UAE E. Those perfumes from Middle Eastern houses a lot of times look very out there and very crazy and very intricate. And this one is one of the most simple bottles I've ever seen with this stone cap and everything. It's really heavy and weighty. It has this frosted glass bottle and I love the bottle and the perfume. So. This perfume has main accords of fruity, fresh and sweet with top notes, black currant, lychee, mandarin, heart notes, jasmine, peony, water lily and base notes, ambroxan, musk, oak moss, praline, vanilla. To me, it smells like what I wanted Ariana Grande's cloud pink to smell like because this does smell like Baccarat Rouge, the DNA. It's definitely a cousin, a first grade, is it called like first, first grade cousin or first cousin? Something like that. They are very similar. However, this one is a lot more fruity and fun. And to me, it smells a lot like Baccarat Rouge shampoo with loads of fruits in there. It reminds me of a fruity perfume I have in my collection, but I don't really know which one it is. But it's one of those apple shampoo-y kind of perfumes. You know what? Actually, it reminds me a little bit of what this one smells like. And I'm going to talk about this one in a second. So like an apple, crisp apple shampoo scent with the beautiful, airy, elegant... Baccarat Rouge DNA in there. So to me, it's beautiful. The only thing is it's not a beast mode. I have had this bottle sitting for a while and on me and in my case, it did not get stronger. So this one is one that I have to spray a second time towards like maybe like two o'clock or something. It's not one that I'm going to smell the whole day, but for that kind of money, it's okay for me. Then we have a chorus scent and I have to say those chorus perfumes are so underrated. They are so inexpensive for what you get. I like so many of them. This is Sikinos and Sikinos has the main accords of floral, fresh and fruity with top notes, bamboo, freesia, watermelon, heart notes, lotus, mimosa, salty notes and base notes, sandalwood, cedarwood and musk. You could think that it's going to be like this typical salty vanilla type of perfume for summertime but it's not and it is you definitely get the synthetic salty sweet thing going on that you have for example in vanilla vibes by Juliet has a gun but this one has those beautiful aquatic florals and this watery juicy watermelon <laughs> in there with the bamboo making it slightly green as well so this one to me is a perfect everyday scent for when it's still a little bit warm you can wear it in springtime summertime into like early summery warm fall days because this is a fruity fresh fun and happy playful scent with those more elegant notes in there to ground it. It has the woods in there. It has the freesia, which to me is like a very beautiful, more elegant floral. And the lotus and the mimosa 
So this one is a beautiful take on like a salty summery perfume. Then I had, I had to talk about this perfume, but just quickly, this is Sol de Janeiro's Churosa 59. Yes, I have been telling you about this perfume over and over and over again, but it's just the truth. I wear this perfume a lot of times throughout the week, especially when I go to bed. So this is my newest bottle. I have this small baby bottle of it, but I have used up a lot of these bottles already, which is crazy. So this is a vanilla orchid, sugared violet and sheer sandalwood scent. It's cozy, it's comforting. Today is raining a lot and this is the perfect scent to wear for today. It's just so warm and enveloping. The sandalwood is super creamy. The violet gives it this powderiness, but because it's like sugared, it also gives you this crystallized sugar effect. Together with the vanilla orchid, it's just sweet, it's creamy, but still fluffy and not too overly sweet, if you know what I mean. And just something that I love to wear to bed. But I'm sure I will be wearing it throughout the day now that it gets colder. I think I haven't talked about this perfume in a while and it's just because it's so hard, I think, to get this perfume worldwide. I'm not too sure. I mean, things change. But this is Pavlova by Jeanne Arth and this is from the Tea Time à Paris collection. I love these bottles. They are so cute. And this one is the pink bottle with the Pavlova scent. And these perfumes are here so, so inexpensive. And this one in particular, this collection, it's amazing because this is a really heavy bottle. It's a really good sprayer. The other perfumes in not that line, but this house has perfumes that are like four to five euros and they are so badly made. And this one is like a normal perfume, but it's like 12 euros. So this one is beautiful. This one has main accords of sweet, fruity and gourmand with top notes, candied apple and strawberry, hard notes, rose and vanilla cream and white musk in the base. To me, this is what people wanted Yara to smell like because to me, it's like a candied apple strawberry milkshake. It's beautiful. It's creamy. It's slight. It's slightly sweet, but not too much. You definitely get this airy musk in there together with those definitely synthetic fruits, but I do like it. It's something that's so playful yet elegant. To me, it smells a little bit like a ballerina would smell like so delicate and slightly sweet, but not too much. The longevity is not the best, but I mean for 12 euros or however much I spend on this is totally fine. And I just free spray throughout the day. A celebrity scent I have been wearing a lot and you can see it. I'm almost halfway through this bottle. This is Jungle Fantasy by Britney Spears. Underrated as well. And to me, this is the most adult perfume in this fantasy lineup. I like a lot of their perfumes actually, but they are very, very sweet. And I'm not always in the mood for those super sweet scents. And this one is just always right. It does go in a similar direction to this one, but this one is a lot more salty. This one is just to me more signature worth. I could wear this throughout the year. It is fruity, but it's more so very fresh and a little green with some sweetness in there. So this has main accords of aquatic, fruity and sweet with top notes, violet, watermelon, yuzu, heart notes, gardenia, water lily and base notes, cake and tonka bean. But the violet leaf maybe is what gives it this elegance. It's not an elegant perfume, but it's just not as juvenile as others in the lineup, if you know what I mean. It's just so fresh, so fruity. Reminds me of fresh perfumes from K 
Calvin Klein but just a lot more fruity and easy to wear and it's just something I gravitate towards if I don't know what to wear I gravitate towards this one a lot I also love the bottle and it's so cute and tiny maybe I would even consider buying it again once it's done even though I want to test out more and more fragrances but this is just one I really enjoy then I talked about this one shortly this is Badi Al Oud Sublime by Latafa and I feel like it changes a lot once you let it sit it changes a lot into something even more middle eastern and a little spicy at first this was like Kayali's Eden Juicy Apple with some slight depth in there to make it more interesting and longer lasting than the Kayali one. Now that I've had it for months, I get this almost like peppery spiciness in there, which makes it super interesting. And I love my fruity perfumes and I love them even more if they have something interesting to them. So. This one has main accords of fruity, sweet and floral with notes of apple, lychee and rose, heart, plum and jasmine and base notes, vanilla, moss and patchouli. Is that correct? I don't know. I go to another side. They have other fragrance notes. I'm not too sure. But maybe it is the moss and the patchouli. I'm not too sure. To me, it smells like oud actually and a little bit like Ambroxan or something like they're making it very sexy. This is a super sexy scent to me. It is a crisp candied red apple scent that is super fruity. It has freshness in there. It's sweet, but as I said, there is something to me almost like peppery and oody and deep in there making it more sexy and grounding it. And I adore the bottle and if you want to try the Kayali one or if you've tried it and it's maybe a little bit too juvenile for you or you just wanted something with more performance I would suggest trying this one next up we have one I think I've never seen anyone talk about this perfume I have the green one this is from Juicy Couture it's I don't know what the collection is but I have one that is called palm trees please which I love it's like a peach green tea scent it is super sweet so that one I love and I saw this one for major sale so I just got it it's called bye bye blues and the main accords are aquatic citrus and fresh with fragrance notes bluebell watery fruits amber aquatic notes Blue Orchid, Driftwood, Lemon, Lotus and Musk. And yes, it also does smell a lot like those perfumes, but they all have something different to them. So this one, as I said, is more salty. This one is more fruity. And this one, I think, is the most unisex. It's definitely watery and woody. And it reminds me a little bit of Light Blue or the I Love Love by Moschino, those types of scents, but more watery and more sweet. So this definitely has the fruits in there, the amber to make it sweet. The other ones are hardly ever considered sweet, I would say. But for that reason, I gravitate more towards this than the others. The only thing is this was extremely inexpensive and so the performance is lacking. I think this is the weakest out of all of them, but because it's so refreshing, I have no problem respraying it. And the last one is one of my favorites and it is so underrated. And so many people give it such bad ratings. I don't know why. To me, it's such a favorite of mine. So this is Giorgio Amani's Si Passione Ecla. This has main accords of floral, sweet and fruity with top notes blackcurrant, bergamot, heart notes rose and base notes white musk vanilla. Super easy, not very complex, but still something I do not have in my collection. I at the moment crave those rose perfumes that are not your typical just a fresh rose. 
I love the Sisley one, which is like a citrusy, super fresh rose. And this one is a creamy, fruity rose. I wanted something almost like a rose milk. And this is exactly that. It has the black currant in there. It's super milky from the vanilla and the musk with this beautiful plush rose and something a little fruity from and fresh from the bergamot. But there is something deep in there and I think I've seen somewhere patchouli. I'm not too sure where I've seen it, but I think I've seen patchouli as a note and it would make sense because it has something in there that gives it some depth, but just in the background, just how I like it. This is just beautiful and I crave it a lot of times. It's something I, it's like an easy grab for me, even though it's not as easy to understand as the other ones I just told you about. It's something very specific, but this rosy milk scent with those fruity aspects is exactly what I was craving for months. And so, yeah, you can see I have quite a big dent in there. I think I have to do one of those big dent perfume bottle videos again. <laughs> yeah, but this is lovely. Okay, so these were the budget perfumes I love at the moment. Please let me know which budget perfumes you adore at the moment, which ones you cannot stop wearing. And I hope to see you in my next video. Bye.